Now that we've had a chance to look at the types of decay and the uh, stability uh, and what defines stability, we're going to look at two examples of um, lecture problems where we're going to do first is predicting the uh, products of an emission and then the second one is going to be predicting what type of decay. So in lecture problem one, it says uh, K40, potassium 40, decays via beta emission. Predict the product and write the balanced nuclear equation. So if we have uh, potassium 40, now what you'll notice is that we don't give the atomic number here. So what the first thing you got to do is you got to write down potassium. We know the molecular weight of it is 40. So you got to go to the periodic table and look up what its atomic number is, and that's 19. Okay, and then it says it does a beta emission. So now we have to remember what is a beta particle. Well, a beta particle is 0 over minus 1 e. It's basically an electron. So now to balance it out, what we're going to do is because the number of nucleons, protons and neutrons, and the charge much, must be conserved, um, we're going to use that to our advantage in terms of figuring out what the product should be. So if on the left we have a total mass number of 40 and we have no mass in the electron, then our product has got to have 40 nucleons. Now over here we have 19 in the atomic number spot. Um, if we have a minus 1 over here, that means that we have to have one extra proton, so we're going to get 20 over here. So if you look that up on the periodic table, that's going to be 40 over 20 calcium. So that's how we do that. And if you look... Uh, at the n to z ratio, if you calculate the n to z ratio here, this is going to be 21 over 19, whereas here it's 21 over 20. So you can see that uh, this n to z ratio is greater than 1 and is not right. Um, that means that we had too many neutrons. So the beta emission is expected here because we convert one of those extra neutron neutrons to a proton. Now we get back to an n to z ratio of 1. Okay, let's look at uh, this next one. So uh, this one is plutonium-239 decays to uranium-235. Predict the type of radioactive decay and write the balanced nuclear reaction. So this is a really good one because this is one where you'd have to figure out what, was, what came off. So let's write our reactants and our products. So we have 239, and then I go up and I look at the atomic number for plutonium, which is 94. And then um, for uranium, we write down our product, which is... Uh, uranium-235, and we look up the atomic number there is 92. So now we have to see what, what's the difference between these two. Well, the atomic number changed by 2, and the mass number changed by 4. So we know that this must be a, an alpha particle. So the correct answer here is alpha decay, and this is our balanced nuclear reaction. And I did that by looking at the difference between the product and the reactant to see what was missing. So now if we look at lecture problem two, um, we can look at what's going on with uh, these two elements, calcium uh, 47 and aluminum 25. So let's start by just calculating the n to z ratio. So in this case, we have um, a n to z ratio. So if we calculate the number of neutrons, we're going to have 27 over 20 um, here. So the way, the way that I got 27 was by taking 47 minus 20. So this 27 is really high. Um, so this n to z ratio is much greater than 1. So we're going, to ex we, we're going to predict, based on that, that we're going to have a beta. Because um, normally our n to z, if we're at 20 or close to 20, we should be close to 1 to 1. So in this case, we're much higher than that. We have way too many uh, neutrons. We have uh, 7 more neutrons than we need. So we're going to get a beta emission. So for 47 over 20 calcium, we write down our beta particle, which is 0 over minus 1 e. And then to balance this out, we get the same number of nucleons um, in our product because the mass number was 0. But we have to have one more uh, proton to make sure that the 21 plus a negative 1 gives us back the 20. So if you look that up on the periodic table, that gives you scandium as the product. So this one's going to be beta, and it's going to be scandium. Now let's look at um, the next one. So we have 25 over 13. So if we do our calculation here, we're going to get 12 for the, the uh, N, 
and 13 for the z. So this is going to be less than 1. So we're thinking either one of two possibilities. We're thinking either electron capture or positron emission. Those are our two. Oops, spelled that wrong. Those are our two that are going to allow us to convert a proton to a neutron. So in this case, um, you could pick either one and write it out. It doesn't matter. Both would give you the right answer, but I'm going to show you both. So if we were to do a positron emission, and we, had, we have 25 over 13 aluminum, the positron on the other side is going to be 0 over 1e. So you have to memorize that, what the positron is. Once you have that, then you know that what we're going to have is 25 because the mass number is zero for the positron. And we're going to have 12 on the bottom. So if we look that up, this is going to be magnesium, um, a magnesium atom. So that would be an, a positron emission. If we did electron capture, and we had 25 over 13 aluminum, so we would add an electron, zero over minus one E, and then our product would be the same. It just is a matter of how you do it. Now, the way that I came up with that was if we have an electron capture, 13 and a minus 1 gives us a grand total of 12 on the left, so we have to have 12 on the right. So that's how you get that. So this video, I know it was a short one, but this covers how you would actually do problems on the exam in terms of radioactive decay and predicting and uses information from the last two videos.